we can start. start. Sorry. Oh, okay. I just thought yeah, I don't the magic start. Just, yeah. Okay. Are we all set? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first ever show just in Lithuania, where we talk to them goddamn immigrants that come to Lithuania to steal our jobs. And today, <laughs> in our show, please welcome uh, the uh, two guys from the uh, greatest. Uh, magic show in the world, The Illusionists. Uh, it's uh, Hello, guys. We're not, we're James not Moore ourselves. We're and Mr. Uh, Yuho Jin. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you too. So welcome to Lithuania. Thank you very much. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> we come to sell our homemade jam. Oh man, that's, that's we, we have that. We have a lot of that. Yeah. It's doing yeah. well here, is it? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a <laughs> tough competition. We're checking on the business. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you guys are, uh, you're from Great Britain and you're from South Korea. Yes, obviously. Uh, okay. How old are you? I'm 26. And I'm 30. 30. How old are you? In, I'm 34. Um, Just turned 34. Yeah, kind of old. February 16. Okay. Kind of old. Yeah, well, you know, okay. still yeah. every every everything still you works. Look, yeah, it's and it's a surprise because uh, <laughs> I I just came back from my weekend in Prague. Uh, the good beer they have there. <laughs> Do you yeah, guys? Great beer. You're uh, well, you're from from this uh, magical world of illusions. Mm -hmm. Can you drink at all? Uh, not on a show night. It's like yeah, I don't tend to drink on a. On a show night. Yeah, because like uh, a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah, if you're, uh, I tried it once. It wasn't really. Big. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried doing your tricks uh, while you no, know? Not in, whilst in drunk on stage, but the following day having a yeah, a, yeah. Then never again. I learned my lesson very quickly. <laughs> you ever done? Uh, you ever done your act uh, hang hungover? Um, yeah, when I was when I was younger, in my early twenties, regretted it and never did it again. Yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> did it, Did it go bad? It doesn't. Uh, no, I managed to hold myself together and actually stay upright. So that was a start. But um, yeah, just yeah, it was a rough day. So I never forgot it. <laughs> so, so you learned your lesson. I learned my lesson. What about you? No, I never did that. Uh, yeah. Do you drink a lot at all? No, actually, I was kind of weak. You know for drink alcohol but now i'm drinking sometimes with james you know after the show but i never drink before the show you know well you, you kind of have to if you if you're if you're involved with this guy yeah. you kind of have to drink <laughs> what about you i <laughs> oh I, shit, always I, you already I, drink um well i'm, I'm quite a russian so <laughs> i, I kind of have to it's like in my genes i have a net my, my grandmother is from siberia so i have a natural immunity right. to to cold and alcohol All and right. vodka Okay. So, yeah. So you kind of have to drink when you're quarter Russian. That quarter just keeps okay. bugging you and on the inside. <laughs> okay. Go to, dr go to drink. Yeah. <laughs> in built in you. Go to drink and wrestle a bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about your background a, a little bit. Uh, so you were born in uh, mm. South Seoul. Korea. Seoul? Yeah. Oh, that's a big yeah. city. My permanent residence is in Seoul. What kind of... What kind of family were you born into? Like, uh, who were your parents? Well, I have a mom. Okay. And I born from my mom, Mr. Mok. As, as you usually do, yeah. yeah. And I have a daddy. Okay. And I have a two, what, did, what did they two do? Two older sisters. Uh, who were your parents? Like, what did they do? Well, actually, my mom now is just having, you know, chill out, you know. Okay. You know, stay home and then, you know, having fun with the friends. Then my daddy works uh, kind of fixing the car. Okay. So he knows very well about the car. And then, actually, I don't know exactly about my sisters. Yeah, we are very close, but actually, you know, I'm always working, you know, outside of Korea. So it's kind of uh, difficult to talk with them. So, but maybe they are having fun. Well, they probably do. <laughs> Seoul is a, oh yeah, Seoul is a great city to have fun. <laughs> yeah, Seoul is a really great city. Uh, what was your experience first time out of uh, South Korea? Where did you go? Like, what was your first trip to uh, from uh, abroad? 
What do you mean in Korea? No, no, no. Just abroad. Where, where, what was your first trip abroad from Korea? What is the meaning of abroad? outside of Korea? The first place you went? Wow, that was the Thailand, Bangkok. Oh, I've been to Thailand. Yeah, Bangkok was the first time. Crazy shit, yeah, my there. life. Yeah, yeah, I was very surprised because, you know, there was 2008, and then you know the culture is really different from Korea, and then you know. Like uh, on the street, uh, I saw the street, you know, market. There is uh, some snacks, actually, like, you know, cockroach. Cockroach, yeah. They yeah. burn cockroach and they are eating. I, I was never, like, whoa. I, I never had the stomach to try those. <laughs> it's, like, I, it's like, it's like, there are a lot of people that go to Thailand and they're like, oh, shit, I'm mm -hmm. going to try it's the snake, the cockroach, the, 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 all the disgusting shit. But, but I, I never, I never got myself. I'm, I'm not brave, uh, brave enough. Me neither, me neither. I can't haven't tried try. those. No. Have you tried the tranny? Actually, I just, uh, you know, bite one time and then my friends say it's the cockroach, and I almost throw up. So, <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, what about yeah. the, what about the trannies? Have you tried those? What is trannish? Tranny. I don't uh, know. The lady thing. boy. I was going to say, do you want to know the weirdest thing I've ever eaten? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. 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 I heard. I heard those are delicious. Oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. So, what about you? Where Where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town on the south coast of England called Bournemouth, which is um, full of old people. A lot of people go there to retire. Very slow pace of life. Very quiet. Um, but we have a beach that we can use about two weeks of the year. Oh yeah. Well, the uh, the famous English weather. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of pointless. Um, but it isn't, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly nice place to grow up. There's a forest nearby. There's lots of things to do for kids. But, um, yeah, when I turned 20, I moved to London uh, just to speed up my pace of life and try and generate some more work. Was that a cultural shock for you? Massively. Um, what, would, what did you expect from uh, moving to London and what did you get? Um, I expected to be there more. Um, <laughs> And surprise, surprise, it came true. <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm never there, actually. Obviously, we travel a lot with, with the show, and I've, I've traveled since I was 21. I started working on cruise ships. Um, but originally, yeah, I just moved to London to try and generate some work uh, because I was from a very quiet town, so there wasn't much call for magicians. Where is the, uh, what is the uh, correct time to start working as a, well, to, to start develop your illusionist skills? Well, what is the correct age of, of starting uh, practicing? There is no correct age or no correct place to start magic. Like, uh, for instance, if you want to be a magician from now, actually you could. But it doesn't really well, I, matter. Well, I couldn't because I have those fat fingers. No, it doesn't really matter how, how you're fat or how you're ugly like this. But, you know, <laughs> if you have a really big passion... You know? Yeah, I don't you have can, that e either. That, you know, nothing, right. I have nothing that is big, <laughs> except like my no, shoes really. or something. No, it doesn't really matter if you have, uh, as long as you have, uh, you know, big passion. Okay. But you know what they say: big feet, big socks. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start? Uh, I started to magic when I was eight in Korea. What was your uh, first magic trick? And what, what was your inspiration to start doing magic? Actually, you know, after the school, on the way back to home, uh, my friend showed me some card trick, but it's not the uh, uh, ordinary card trick. He showed me his empty hand, and he producing the card from nowhere. So I was like, wow, this guy is amazing. How he producing the card? Yeah. So I believe that uh, there is a magician in the world, like Harry Potter. You know? Yeah. But actually, there was tricks. I was kind of disappointed. But at the same time, I realized, oh, maybe if I learn this trick, I can be a magician. And okay. I can make the people feeling like it as what I felt. So after that, I decided to be a magician. So it was all about the, uh, the feeling of, of, of magic. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, so you started to working with, the, with like a card? Yeah. Actually, um, I wasn't very rich, you know, like to buy magic props or something. And then my parents, my, my parents denied that I do magic and be a magician. Yeah, so that's, that's, you know, it's, it's like, what do you think? What, what would they be more like? Uh, would they be more proud of you if you uh, told them that you do magic or if you told them that you're like gay? Well, first time, you know, 
when I said to them, I want to be a magician, they said, no, you cannot. You have to study and then you have what did to they be want to, what doctor did they want? or you know, something uh, the like class. a small job. Yeah. Class yeah. Like, wants, like a lawyer. So like, uh, someone can make money like uh, safely. Well, but I wasn't really good at study and then I was a kind of troublemaker, you know, in the school. Oh, really? Yeah, like, uh, so I denied for five years and I practiced magic like in the toilet, like secretly from the mirror. Oh, because, yeah. yeah. Yeah, my dad is kind <laughs> of, was, yeah, kind of aggressive, you know, he was. But after five years, he found out my passion and then he just came to me. He said that, hey, do you really want to be a magician? I said, oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I will accept that you do magic, but you have to do number one in the world. If oh, you don't, man. if you don't have it proud yourself, <laughs> no pressure. You cannot. No pressure. You know, at so all. I said, yeah, I will. Okay. And after that, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like, how, 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 how did you keep it a secret for five years? You know, actually, not cannot, you know, all the time. But sometimes he found out I practice magic, and then he throw away all the magic props. So, okay. Let's make uh, my schedule. It's going work, 6 a.m., and then I have time like uh, at this moment, okay? And then I can practice. Okay, he's come this time, and he's gonna sleep at 9 p.m., so I go to the toilet. So I turn on the water in the sink, and then they cannot listen, and I can practice 30 minutes in front of the mirror, something like that. I had, I had a really huge passion to be a magician. I had the same exact routine, really? but uh, I, well, I, I wasn't doing magic. <laughs> let me just tell yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as yeah. soon as my father found out about it, he was like, so, "You're not doing that anymore." But I'm now I'm a yeah. professional masturbator. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> but I, yeah, I understand. So you want like, but you have to be the best that. in the world, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I have yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you have to be the best in the world. Are you? <laughs> well, yeah. People, well, people on the bus <laughs> consider me to be <laughs> the best in the world. <laughs> Whoa, what That's about great. you, James? <clears throat> uh, no, I stopped masturbating years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what well, my story? I started when I was eight, but I was more interested in uh, the circus, like juggling, and I was a weird kid, like uh, puppets as well. I had an obsession with this puppet, a bird that I had. And um, I entered a school talent show, and really I put the magic trick in just to fill the time. I made it out of an old shoebox. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very good. However, <laughs> after the show, all the adults and everyone came up to me, and how did you do the trick? They didn't talk about the puppet or the juggling. They wanted to know how I did the magic trick. So I think to an eight-year-old kid, I realized, oh. Yeah, that, that's what gets you, <laughs> get you your attention. And that got me attention and that, you know, I realized, oh, all the adults don't have all the answers. So it kind of led me down the magic path and then I never looked back. Oh, do you feel uh, smarter than the adults and uh, that kind of... Uh, well, probably, yeah, as an eight-year-old boy, I, th I, th I thought, oh, this is different. This is something unique. And um, yeah, I think that initially that's how it started. Of course, now it's very different for me. But yeah, as a kid, it was... a. Uh, it was a powerful thing to me. <laughs> you just you, you just spoke about puppets, and uh, I read uh, this article. Um, it's like from 2011, where there was this uh, guy in Russia yeah. who dug up, who used to dug up uh, girls' corpses and dress them up as puppets. Oh, yeah. And he had, and he had like, uh, like in total, he confessed to digging up 80 little girl corpses and dressing up them. Like, as puppets, like, as puppets, and they sh and, and he he used to uh, like put holes in, in in their eye sockets and and show them like uh, and 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 used to sit them around him. And, well, I'm sure uh, that got show, him a show, fair bit of show attention, them, didn't show it? them cartoons and stuff. And then when they caught him, he was like a professor, and uh, he he knew 30 languages. He was like considered to be a genius, but then he had this uh, weird. Yeah, Weird he went over the edge a little on. bit too yeah. much, didn't he? There? So, yeah. how <laughs> lucky are you to find <laughs> your well, magic I'm, side? I, I mean, I'm glad you I could just have stuck up to, like, the, to the bird. To you be could have ended up as a puppeteer, like uh, I could have done. Well, it could still happen. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Maybe after this interview, I'll go down to the local graveyard. Who knows? <laughs> I'll show you around. I'll show you the best. <laughs> I'm the best sure, spots. you know the best spots to dig. <laughs> So when did you actually find out that uh, you're like really good at it? You're really good at what you do. Mm, well, I'm still finding out. <laughs> I'm yeah, really but that's good. what uh, that's what the uh, world champion would say. Well, the, there is the you're very uh, physium, 
actually we call Magic Olympic. Right. Every three years they held in different countries, like a real Olympic. Yeah. And then that was the my first dream when I started Magic when I was young. My dream was I want to be on physium stage. That was my dream. I like didn't Grand Prix. Not I didn't I didn't expect that I want to get a, a high price like first prize, second mm -hmm. prize, Grand Prix because I know it's the one of the not just the best magic convention mm -hmm. and the magic festival or so magic olympic the first mm -hmm. yeah so uh i was trying my best uh to be on physium stage and i was on physium 2012 in blackpool and luckily i got the grand prix so may wow. may, may you wonder what is the grand prix is there is the 100 uh competitor and they competed together, and they... So they, they handpick, like, they, they select uh, 100 competitors from around the world. Yeah. The best ones in the exactly. business. Exactly. And so. uh, they put them, uh, put them all on yes. one stage, and they find out uh, exactly. who's the best one is. So after that, we have uh, some category, general and many plate, and the mentor, some illusion. Uh -huh. So we have, uh, uh, like, uh, five first prizes, and then we have a final contest with the... Uh, with all the first prizes. Right. And then we picked who is the Grand Prix. So I was the Grand Prix, luckily. And I thought, yeah, I'm the best, of course. Yeah. That moment, I was like, wow. Your head. It's over, yeah. Your head uh, got yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, of course. It huge big. You know, but just because uh, uh, I got the Grand Prix doesn't mean to say that I'm the best magician. But it took a long time that I realized this. You know, for a long time, I was like, yeah. I'm the Grand Prix, first Asian, you know. Yeah. Youngest magician who got yeah. the Grand Prix. Yeah, I'm that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And and you were uh, what, twenty uh I was nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen. Yeah, and you want the Grand yeah, Prix. Know, that, that kind of fucks with your head sometimes. <laughs> well it could. Yeah, but but it it's could. True, like, yeah. cause, cause, yeah. uh every every time a young person uh gets like, you know, they don't know they don't know the life and, so and then, sure. and then yeah. you know, you have you know, exactly. you're young, dumb and full yeah. of cum and like and you're just like, mm -hmm. Wow, okay, so this is it. This is it. This exactly. is the peak the, the, Exactly. Uh, but and uh, did you do any uh, stupid shit when uh, a lot, a lot? Because what, I, what yeah. kind of trouble did you get yourself into uh, Actually, while uh, thinking that you're the best? First thing is I made my company own company, your own company. Yeah, actually, Doing what? I could go in some company because there was some uh, several purpose uh, to scout me, mm -hmm. but I denied because I'm a Yuhojin. I can make my own company Yuhu because uh, the. the yeah, the thing is, what is the most different thing is before the physium and after physium. Before the physium, no one calls me to have a show. No one invited me. Yeah. Because they don't know who am I. But after the physium, I was on the news for a few days. You know, because first Asian Grand Prix in the world. Yeah. They proud of me very, very much. And they call me, hey, I want to invite you 30 minutes. But we don't have a lot of budget, actually. Is it possible 30 US thousand US dollar for 30 minutes? I was like, what? How much is it? 30,000 US dollars for 30 minutes. Yeah. That's like every night. Yeah, like every night for one month. Oh, I was like, wow, my life well, changed everything. Can. Yeah, so you can't live off of it, but it's I a know. good start. But the thing is, for me, oh, in my head, okay, it's easy to making money. We can spend you know, 30,000 US dollar every day. So I spend everything with my Family, what's no the, friends, and then company. What's the most stupid th thing that you bought <laughs> with your shitloads of money? Like, did you buy a car? Yeah, of course we bought. Car. What, what kind of car did you buy? Like the first one? No, first one is the uh, Korean brand Kia. And Kia, then of course. We could, we bought uh, like a big van because uh -huh. you know I just want to be like, hey, I'm the sports star. <laughs> 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 and then we bought the. Uh, uh, one big room in the building because we need a company. So okay. we bought the company also. Where we spent actually we spent all the night for the drink. Actually, even you I party a lot. Yeah, and then yeah, we always had a party. But the thing is, uh, after the one month, uh, they couldn't remember who am I, and then they don't call me anymore. And, <laughs> oh, and shit. at the moment, we we're like, damn. Okay, what should I do? We, uh, did, we didn't know anything. Actually, I didn't have any knowledge about the 
you know, that business things. Come back to reality. Whoop, here comes gravity. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I had only one act, which is I got the Grand Prix. Yeah. And I realized, oh, I didn't have a lot of things to be a great magician. Then, yeah, after that, I started to run more and more till now. So, yeah, like uh, even now, me and James, after the show, we always trying to practice and then trying to make uh, new ideas, you know. Yeah, because you know where you, where you're gonna end up if you yeah. don't. It's, it's like you're gonna me. end up a homeless person if you don't. I know, but you know, you, you, do you know anything else? Well, if, like except magic, can you do that's, anything else? That's the else? good thing. It's, that's the that's the fact. You know, that's the point. Like the people think, oh, you're a great magician already, the illusionist. Oh, you already achieved your goal. Yeah. Of course, they can say. Even you know, apparently we are. But the thing is. For me, magic is kind of language, you know. I, you know, I'm studying English as well, but it's really difficult, but also fun. But I don't think there's end to learn some language, you know. Magic is like this because we okay. always has to create new idea, and then we, when when you have some idea, now just I'm doing, but next year, hundred magicians doing same trick, and then twenty years, thousand magicians doing the same trick. So yeah. we have to create new and new and then something different all the time. Right. That's why we are learning very much. Right. What about you, James? When, uh, when was your... Well, well you obviously, uh, anyone that uh, has YouTube, uh, they can just Google you and, and, and find that you were on the uh, Britain's Got Talent. Was that your big break? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> that was the biggest jump, I think. I was, I was, yeah, like I say, I was working on the cruise ships. That was a, that was a big deal to me. You know, I came from quite a modest background, so I was working in these clubs. Fights were breaking out in the clubs, and then I got, a, I got a deal with the, with the cruise ship. <laughs> Hold on, yeah. Hold on. You were working on, <laughs> you were working in bars, and the fights yeah, would yeah. break up. Yeah, people used to heckle me, and then security would have to come, and then the guy, had a guy punch the security guard, and there'd be a, like a brawl in the middle of my show. Oh man, that is yeah. so British. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> the cruise ships were like, yeah, they were a big, big step up because the, the, these cruise ships now they've got they've got theaters on. Oh you know, yeah, the, the cruise ships theaters. now are amazing. Like they they have uh, and they have the top notch performers. Yeah, uh, right. work in the cruise ships. Yeah, they've got amazing performers. And I, I was very young when I when I first started on on the cruise ships compared to a lot of the other performers. So I was twenty one. Um, what was your act back then? Um, most of it was. Uh, on a, on a camera, like sleight of hand card tricks. And uh -huh. I had a big screen behind me because I have to fly the act on with me. So the act would have to go into maybe two or three suitcases. Okay. And I'd, I'd land on the ship and I'd have to work out of, out of my suitcases. So it couldn't be anything really big. Um, not only that, I couldn't afford anything really big back then. So um, I did a 45 minute. It was actually a really great job. 45 <laughs> minutes once a week, the rest of the week, they let me be a passenger on the ship. So as you can imagine, as a 21-year-old, uh, I just partied and, and yeah. traveled around the world. It was, it was probably the best job I ever had. <laughs> oh, man. Like, as a 21-year-old, <laughs> yeah. you do one show a week and uh, you get your money and the food is free uh, on the cruise ship. Like, yeah, my bed was made. Your bed, well, yeah. You know? yeah it, so it, was, it was ridiculous. You, you have a, like, it, it's, it's like you have a mom, but the, the, without the uh, whole... My mom never made my bed. <laughs> never? <laughs> never made my bed. No. Oh, okay. No, no. So it was just a different world. Um, of course, I, I, I practiced, um, but I was also introduced, you know, to, to, to the world of being a young man and what, everything that comes with that as a 21-year-old. So, um, yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. I enjoyed those times. How, how, how did it come about that you uh, tried yourself out in the uh, Britain's Got Talent? Well, I actually met a guy that was slightly older than me, another performer on the cruise ship, mm -hmm. and uh, he had two kids at home. And... Um, He'd spent 10 months away from them, just on this circuit. And the problem is with the cruise ships, because you're away from land, you're away from any other kind of source of work. So people get stuck doing this cycle, just traveling around the world on these cruise ships. Just like Hotel uh, California. Yeah, so I, I, wanted a, I wanted a way to come back to land um, and to, to try something different. I'd done it for three years. I was a young man, I was curious. So uh, yeah, I decided that I'd try out for Britain's Got Talent. And then the the video of my audition went viral after I did the show and it oh, was yeah. something like 88 million yeah. views. Um, that was huge. 
which was crazy. So I was going to Singapore, and people were like, oh, you're the guy from YouTube. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, that, that is the thing with YouTube. You, you become gl famous globally. Yeah, the reach is yeah, beyond my imagination. Yeah. And um, it certainly opened doors and gave me opportunities. You know, I, I think it actually gave me the opportunity to be in, in The Illusionists. How, uh, how scared were you to, uh, when doing, like, before doing your first act, just, just before the audition? Yeah, pretty nervous, pretty nervous. Just because I knew it was going to be on national television, I wanted everything to, to, to go well. Um, and What I went through your mind? Was just not to mess it up. I think magic back then was, especially on these talent shows, was, was the easy option if it went wrong to, to get a cheap laugh out of the audience. So mm. they didn't really take it very seriously. Um, and I think my act was one of the first times where they sort of came around to magic being, being popular with yeah. people. Um, and yeah, it sort of changed then. And now we've got, you know, America's got time. We just had Shin Lim win that, another magician. Um, and it's become more popular within those TV talent shows ever since. So it was a turning point. Is it, uh, well, you guys, uh, how much time do you spend uh, on the road, on mm. tour, a year? Well, around six months or a year. Six yeah. months. Yeah, more than six months, actually. Six months. Yeah. We walked from 2013, and then we separated sometimes. He working like Europe, and I, wo I worked in US, uh, US right. something like that. But like, uh, from 2013, for seven years, we are working more than six months a year Man, with the Illusionists. But that's, you know, that's uh, like a blessing and a curse, because you have to... Uh, well, you, you get to do your dream job every single week in the big halls. You get you get loved and uh, applauded by huge crowds. Uh, and then again, is it is it like uh, how hard is it to uh, like maintain a relationship when when you're doing the kind of job that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. It's like uh, the. Uh, so, so here's an example. If I go, if I if I meet someone, I go on a date with them. The following week, I'm I'm leaving. You yeah. know, so I so there's big periods of time in between meeting that person again. So you can't really develop the relationship that you you'd want with a person or get close to them. Yeah, and and if you fall in love, you're you're effed. Like well, you're well. That's it. You, you're living a long distance. Have, yeah, of course. Yeah, a long distance relationship, yeah. as we all know, works perfectly. Yeah, unless of course you you fly them out to see you. Yeah, but we have uh, friends here, you know. So of course I understand about the relationship. But uh, I had a girlfriend during the tour all the time, and then he as well. So actually, our girlfriends came to where where we are actually, like flight. We can they cannot stay every day with us, you know, like uh, one or one times. A month or two months, but actually, I prefer this because you know, I love them. But because when you are working, I want to focus uh, for my work sometimes, so I cannot focus. You know, both. I am not a multitask. You know, so sometimes when I when I want to relax, my girlfriends came to see me, and then we can have fun. Like one week after that, I I feel like oh, I, I had a good relax, and then it's time to work. Something like that. Yeah, but it's like not always about you. Like uh, yeah, it depends the, on the, the girl. girl yeah. The girlfriends. It depends well, on the girl. It's. Uh, I think it's quite a usual case that uh, the girl wants commitment and uh, like, you, well, she, they will have some some issues with the uh, with you the whole away. Yeah, yeah the whole yeah, yeah. long if, distance. If you find a girl that wants to be with you all the time, it, it ain't gonna work. It's gonna break down. Mm -hmm. We, I think, for us, we need to find someone that's also, you know, yeah, we need time in their work the and that wants time away. It's the only way it can work for for someone with this lifestyle. Is there a risk? Because uh, because the easiest way, like, well, for me right now, just the hypothetical, like uh, the easiest way would be uh, find someone on the crew, uh, you know, on on, and uh, uh. so so they would be <laughs> near. Well, yeah, that's a risk. If it breaks but, down. but that's is is it uh, like in your contract that you can't uh, fuck your <laughs> no, co-workers no. that is very interesting question and then actually as you mentioned it's, it's just a thing it's just a way to it have is. It's, it's the most comfortable, yeah. and then comfortable especially one. James working with the dancers all the time in the show 
because he has to spend more time than me or others, and then for him it's more easy. But he is always hold himself because the reason is only one thing: is if you make any relate, we know there will be some problem during yeah you know, relate. And, and then when it's done, we don't want to make any problem during the show because we are here as a magician, not as a just man or boy for who's who is making fun. You know, we are meeting three thousand audience a day. They pay a lot for to come to see our show. We have to do our best, you know. But if there is something wrong with the, in the company, actually we cannot do our best. We know that. That's why we hold yeah, ourselves it's very a much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we have the saying in Lithuania: "Don't don't bring your own firewood into the forest," because oh. there's plenty there. <laughs> 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 yeah, we just have the saying. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's the reason why. So from the, uh, uh, is is this the kind of job that you want to do for the rest of your life? Yeah, pretty much. I think we'll always have a tie to magic. You know, we we, we well, we can't really do anything else. But we spent so much time involved with it. Um, you know, learning and meeting people and uh, developing ourselves within within the industry that we we can't really escape that. I think it's going to stay with us forever. Whether that be performing or something behind the scenes, there'll always be a tie to magic. So it might not be necessarily on the stage, but it might be behind the cameras or consulting for someone else or consulting in West End shows or something like that. Do you have uh, childhood heroes growing up? Yeah, definitely. Like who, who was the... Because uh, for me, like the first time that I've heard of, uh, of like, you know, a professional magician, it was David Copperfield. Right. I think that's the most common answer probably. Yeah, sure of any any person uh who were your childhood but, heroes but when i started magic you know uh as i mentioned i believe there was a magician real magician like harry potter and then i didn't know anything about the real magic life like copperfield was something so the first magician i've ever known uh, was the ungeli he's the one of the best magician in korea and then he producing the doves, you know, and then like he oh, yeah, transfer uh, in the stage to the outside, like what Kapapir uh, did in the, his show, so yeah. similar. But for me, I was like, wow, this guy, I want to be like this. Yeah. So he was my superhero when I started Magic. Have you ever met him? Because they say he, he's you one should... of one of my best friend now. Really? Yeah. That's that's the magic say, for me. That's the magic, isn't it? They do say that uh, like you shouldn't meet your heroes because well, you'll probably be disappointed. But you met your hero and uh, he's as cool as you thought. It well, he's the, he's the, he's just the, uh, my hero, and then I admire him very much all the time because uh, he don't know how to give up to improve. He always trying. He thinks, is it impossible? It means it's going to be the best one if I make it. So what I learned is something like that from him. And then yesterday for me, he's one of the best magicians in the world. How important is it to uh, have uh, a, an, an, an older colleague? Because uh, like, yeah, he's, he's, he is a mentor to you, as I understand, right? Yeah. Right. So how important is it to have that kind of guy in your life? Well, it's very important because first, there is uh, some reasons. First, uh, he was my hero and I wanted to be like this guy. And then second, uh, when I know uh, about him, I could find out how he, how he made his life. And I can learn and then I can go some way like what, where he went, you know. And then last would be about the passion, how... He had it. All right. Yeah. So, James, have you ever uh, have you ever met your uh, childhood hero? Did uh, you have one? Yeah, Copperfield was big to me. Um, I met him briefly after his show in Vegas, but not for a long time, just for a photo. Um, David Blaine, another one. David Blaine. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was a big influence on me. Obviously, you know, on the TV when I was a kid. <laughs> have you seen the South Park uh, episode about David Blaine? Possibly a long, long time like ago. Like a blaintology. Uh, the, uh, well, anyways, it was a cool, a cool episode. It's David Blaine, huh? Yeah, he was a big influence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are older guys in the show that we can still learn from now. For example, Luis de Matos um, was a guy from Portugal that I used to watch on the TV as a kid. Right. And he's in our show. Yeah, so yeah, he's the, uh, the pre well, 
the main guy, the, the presenter. Yeah, they call him the, the yeah the master magician. The master magician. Um, yeah, he's been in the industry for you know over forty years. So he, there's there's obviously not a, a lot that that he knows, and a lot that we can take from that and learn from him. So if we if we tend you know if we make a mistake or if we start going down the wrong path, he can say, hey, no, 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 this is this is the right way to do it. So um, yeah, that's an incredible asset to have as as a younger performer you know <laughs> the funny story is i uh growing up i was well they had these uh older like the first uh comedians in lithuania and uh, i listened to all of their tapes and i watched every single well every, every single thing that they did and then when we started our stand-up comedy stuff, uh, we reached out to them and, they, and we were like, would you like to guest star in our show? And they were like, no, you guys are assholes. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> True story. And uh, uh, one of them is actually my friend now. But uh, all like in the beginning, they were like, fuck off. You, you guys are joke. Well, you, you guys are a joke and not in a good way. Right. So <laughs> this is, this is how I, that's met heartbreaking. My, this is it? how I met my yeah. heroes. Yeah. That was so heartbreaking. And, up, and, I think it's a good thing for a comedian. Yeah. I just yeah. got really angry and, uh, we started, uh, we, st we started, you know, saying shit about them on, on the air. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. You retaliated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You and were they like, respected that. I now you're like, friends. I was like 22 <laughs> yeah. years old. So yeah, shit, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm we'll gonna push back. Yeah, yeah, it's your right. yeah. <laughs> what about, cause, uh, one of the, uh, things that I remember from, uh, like me watching, uh, magic on, on well, the illusions on, on okay. TV, there was this guy who I always, uh, considered to be an asshole, the, um, the guy who revealed the, the magic tricks, uh, the guy with the mask, masked magician. Uh, yeah. mask magician, the whole experience of the magic show is like you get there mm -hmm. and uh, the magic happens in front of you, right? And you have no idea how it happens. And then this asshole comes along <laughs> and he's like, oh, look, this is all smoke and mirrors. Well, really, the worst thing was that the methods weren't his. Like some of the methods yeah, yeah, date yeah. back hundreds of years. So for yeah. someone to go along and go, Oh, well, the reason that I'm revealing these magic tricks is because we need to push magic forward. N well, that's not, not for you to say, mate. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> they're not your methods. They're not your ideas. You're taking other people's ideas just so you can make a quick buck on television. So, yeah, yeah. now I understand it, it was wrong. And, and, right. and the guy's intentions were just, you know, I suppose to get famous and to make, make money. They weren't really about magic. He didn't really care about magic. Oh, yeah. He w yeah. So he claimed to, uh, to do those kind of videos to, uh, to get rid of the old, uh, the old tricks and to move the, yeah. to, to like force the magicians to m make up new, new stuff. To, to, to push magic forward. But, yeah. but again, you know, we can still use certain methods with a different presentation in order to move magic forward. Yeah. There's no, no need to, to, to reveal something that's 200 years old. Yeah. Do, is there, is there a, um, uh, a thing like a magician society? Yeah, we've got loads of these little cults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cults. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got the magic circle in England. So, yeah. the, among the magic circle, uh, do you uh, know who the guy is? Yeah, we do. He revealed himself. Really? Yeah, he took the mask off on the final episode. I remember. Oh shit! Yeah, and he had death threats from other magicians. <laughs> As you yeah, should. Yeah. As yeah, they you were should. angry. They were angry. Of course, I was young, and so was Hojin, Any, so uh, we weren't threatening. Yeah, yeah. Any idea what uh, happened to the guy? Did anyone Well, apparently someone made a disappear? puppet out of him. Someone made a puppet out of his dead body. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up in Russia yeah. as a little girl yeah. puppet. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he's still going. I think he's performing now. His, his name was Val Valentino. That was his name. He Val won't mind Valentino. me saying it. He told everyone himself. So, so anyone, if, if anyone's listening... Find Val Valentino on the web. Make a death threat. And you'll get free tickets to The Illusionist. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, so... Oh, and by the way, uh, you're traveling around. You, you meet girls. Is... is uh, Like, do you have any uh, pickup lines? Like, hey... Get in the van. I'm, I'm, I'm a magician and I can make your moral values disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, not on you, maybe. Well, like, is, is it, is it uh, like, do girls tend to, uh, 
you know, look more. Actually, after this show, uh, we got a lot of messages from the girls, you know. They say, of course, uh, they say, oh, I, I really enjoyed the show. Oh, James, you are really great. Oh, you are really handsome, sexy. I loved your show. Oh, Jin, oh, I'm falling in love with you, something like that. Okay. And we say, thank you. But as a, <laughs> as a, <laughs> yeah, but thank, thank you. Thank you. But <laughs> we are, of course, we are go their Instagram. Oh, Jin, I want, I want to get into bed with you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. No, no, actually, you know, <laughs> because they say they enjoy it and then we say thank you. And then, of course, we are just like searching their Instagram as well because, you know, how they look. Of course, as a man, I'm curious, but actually, we are not trying to make it some really late uh, during the tour, even from some others, because uh, we don't want to make any trouble in the company. So, we sometimes we want to make fun, but we have to hold ourselves very much. Oh, damn. So you're like uh, the magician monks. Well, I tend to stay away from it because I got catfished once. Really? You know this catfish? Of course. Yeah. So well, yeah. How, how did you get catfished? All right, listen to this, right? So there's a really hot girl online messaging me from LA. And I'm talking to her for about, I don't know, a week or two online. And uh, anyway, she's like, I, I, will, will you Skype me? So I'm like, oh, she's got to be real, right? She's, right? She wants to Skype. She wants to show show me herself in person so i'm like yeah yeah so anyway every time i go around to skype she she she's busy or something's going on anyway one night and and she's there like on the video but she says her sound isn't working first alarm bell ringing right i'm like why is the sound not on yeah there's... so anyway she then starts saying hey should we take our should we take our clothes off <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here so right. immediately i'm like right type to me now type to me so that i know you're real and she wouldn't type anyway she's just like it's just and i realize it's just a video recording of a girl oh damn yeah man i felt i felt yeah so someone, I, I tend to avoid the internet now when it someone comes. went out of their way to uh see your uh your private parts yeah they did they did do you think it was a girl or a guy um well i actually i then i then the, the system broke down i said send me a photo saying with my name And within five minutes, I mean, it was a pretty good Photoshop jobby. Within oh. five minutes, she sent this photo through with my, with my name on. Oh, yeah. But she, I, I, I imagine she was probably called Michael or something. Yeah, yeah. three, three hundred pound guy in, yeah. in their parents' basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go like, oh, this. Um, I felt violated. Guess, guess, guess who's fooled now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saw your show, and he's like, oh man. Yeah, it was a close call, though. It was. A you close fooled call. me. I'll fool you. <laughs> Yeah, an angry guy, an angry masturbator. <laughs> um, have you ever been catfished? No. I, I, have you ever had uh, like uh, real psychotic girls? Like uh, crazy, haven't we cra all? Crazy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? That's I'm, I, I got. You know, I had uh, threats that you know, if you don't meet me, I'll. I'll committed suicide oh like, oh yeah yeah oh yeah it's that like is, that's it's like the best pickup line ever <laughs> like <laughs> how can you say no to that <laughs> if you don't meet me i'll kill myself right. yeah that yeah that one works um i i used to date a russian girl who was a bit nuts but um nothing that bad i mean she never threatened to commit suicide she threatened me a few times well but that's that's what you get for you know not dating. cooking her dinner yeah Dick. well <laughs> If you if you're dating a Russian, you yeah, you have to be, you know, mentally prepared to get threatened once in a while. Yeah, she was strong, very strong. So um, <laughs> she's a strong woman. Yeah, very strong. <laughs> For woman, uh, yeah. buckets and uh, farm work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a it was exciting. You know, I was it was very exciting at the time, but not one I want to go back to. How do you? Uh, is it all? Is there a difference between uh, different crowds, like in terms of? Uh, Like nationalities, is it is it like different to perform in front of uh, oh, the uh, Austrians and like Koreans or and like Americans? Very much like yeah. Actually, now we don't get it. We cannot assume how they will like because, uh, for example, where we went uh, uh, two weeks ago, Krakow. Yeah, yeah, Krakow. we went to the Poland and then we went out at night one day and then we feel like wow people are very nice and then they know how to enjoy at night and then we drank and then we were like we had a lot of fun and we and i said to james james the show is the audience will be great 
it's gonna be amazing. Then he also agreed as well. And opening night, we appear like yeah, uh, eight artists on the stage like magic. Boom. You know, generally people are go crazy. You know, wow. But they're like. <laughs> I was like, something's wrong. It's okay. Uh, maybe they could see something. Maybe okay. I can I can save it. And I was on stage for seven minutes of my act. After finish my act, I expect like woo woo, and then I was like, <laughs> uh, I think something wrong. And also James after the show like yeah, we were. Was Very it like sad. the whole the whole the whole show long? Did, were were they stone cold? Yeah, they just like they don't know how to enjoy. It. But the, after the show, we have a meet and greet. Yeah, and they like that's an amazing show. Oh, and everyone's <laughs> like this great show. They really enjoyed it, but like it just they don't know how to enjoy the show because for them the magic is like uh, first you know they saw first first time you know magic. So oh, like, so they were just like stunned. Yeah, they don't know. Maybe they care about. Uh, their attitude because maybe if they grab it's kind of you know disturb their magic oh okay so, so they, they were know. like really yeah. respectful yeah so now well heads yeah. up to the uh, Lithuanian audience because uh, well we don't clap just because we have we, we have to hold our potatoes in our hands <laughs> it's, uh, it's a tradition <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, at least we know. Okay. At least you, we know. You have to have potato. It's okay, they're not Two clapping. potatoes or one it's potato? Uh, if, you, if you reach, two potatoes. <laughs> okay, 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 not okay. very rich, only okay. one potato, maybe some clap. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, is no, you can, uh, no, no hard, no very much clap okay. because uh, maybe uh, you, you lose can, yeah, you, uh, you lose your you, the sound because you the lose potato, potato <laughs> and uh, what you are without potato ah, okay, you yeah, sure. yeah. crisis so potato is very important <laughs> is po potato is potato. Uh, for lithuanian potato lithuanian ah, okay. brother sister i see i understand it's very good okay Thank you. Thank you for letting me it's know very that. Good. That's good. You in uh, in. Uh, you must never vanish, potato. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is potato many important? Okay. So where is your potato it's, now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. My potato is uh, I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> He's still trying to. Earn his uh, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, saving money. I buy potato. Oh, I see. But now all money in this. This okay. is, uh, if this, mm -hmm. good, many potato. Okay, okay. So you're going to share one with me, right? No. Oh. No, it's <laughs> how I, how is potato. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you, you what? You think I, Mr. Potato Man, go okay. around, uh, <laughs> give out potato. No, I is uh, potato haver, not potato okay. giver. Okay, I understand. It's gooder. Okay. It's good that this way. So maybe you ever I tried? can share with you. you uh, well, you already been to Lithuania. Is, this is your first... Uh, you landed to Lithuania for the first time yes, right Yes, the now, first right? time. And then right. he, he went to here four weeks ago. What did they get? Because, yeah, because he came here uh, four weeks ago and he had a blast. He uh, he had uh, an appearance on the one of the most popular shows in Lithuania, Kakadu Penktadienis, Kakadu Friday. How did that go? It was great. It was <laughs> they already great showed. Fun. They already showed it on air, so the, you showed. can you can say anything. What an experience! I loved it. <laughs> it was really fun. It, uh, although it was a bit odd in terms of the theme. The theme were, were, was real life miracles. So I had a guy next to me telling a story, telling a story about um, how he had a car crash and lost all the feeling in his body, and um, and then. A week later in hospital, he felt so relieved to have felt pain. Yeah, they tend and to bunch up a lot of he, different people. Right, in and, one show. and he thought he was never going to walk again. And this guy's like telling a you know a real deep tragic story, and then they <laughs> and then they come to me and they're like, "So James, show us a magic trick." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I felt quite offensive. Oh. I was like, well, this isn't considered to be a real life miracle, you know? What, what he's talking about <laughs> doesn't really compare to me doing, oh, a, yeah. doing a magic That's, trick. That, that is like the best segue I've ever heard. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So he uh, just uh, conquered death. Uh, James, show yeah, us a trick. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt a little bit. 
inadequate. Like you you felt like uh, you were uh, doing a gig at a funeral. Yeah, pretty much. But then <laughs> you know they put this Lithuanian pop band on, and 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 what kind was, of pop band was that? Was it? Um, I can't remember the name. I'm really sorry, but but three was guys, three guys wearing uh, polo t-shirts. Polo t-shirts. And they're kind of middle-aged guys. Oh, you had chilling them. Yeah, chilling them, right? Mm. So they'd come on, and and then they bring the mood back up. So oh yeah, they're yeah, it was great. Uh-huh. I had a great time. I was dancing in They're my chair. They're great entertainers. They're like the most popular band in uh, Southeast Lithuania. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're lying to me, aren't you? Yes, I enjoyed sir. them anyway. I enjoyed them. I don't care what you say. They're my right, favorite so Lithuanian band. Have you had any uh, interaction with Lithuanian foods? Because uh, I, I, I do believe that the, a British person can really appreciate Lithuanian food. Because you have some uh, disgusting stuff uh, in, <laughs> in Great Britain. What are you Britain talking well? about? Our fish and chips are marvelous. Um, <laughs> well, you have like haggis and. Uh, that's, that's Scotland. I've never tried well, haggis. Anyway, you, you never tried no, haggis? I've never tried it, no. Well, you're, it's your loss. Is it? Uh, no. I wouldn't know. No. Can't it's, miss what you haven't had. No. It's, but yeah, and I'm, I'm far too southern to have tried haggis. See? Yeah. Yeah, the Scottish. Wouldn't so, have you it. ever tried any uh, Lithuanian cuisine? Um, we tried. What is it? We tried. Jurgis. Jurgis took me out to this. This. Uh, Tsepelin. Yeah, okay, we tried well, some of that. Yeah, it's quite heavy. The food, isn't it? Oh, it, it is. You fill up quite quickly. And, yeah. And I tried this. Uh, then like you're sleepy. Fried bread, which you put cheese on. That was fantastic. <laughs> fried bread that you put. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That. That's. That's what we're famous for. And we have like... Uh, and potato. Thing. Yeah, and one potato, of, of course. course. Of course, it's potato. potato. It's good. Um, but actually, I prefer tarantula and cockroach. Are you <laughs> Are you looking forward to... Are, are you going to try? Is, is it like a thing that you do? Uh, you go to different countries and you, you try the local food? Yeah. Or do you stick to no, like uh, yes, the yeah. regular Italian, French cuisine, like pizzas? No, I try. I try. I want. Uh, I like to try, thing, but something delicious. Not okay, like, so uh, I have. Yeah. I have just the thing for you. What's so, uh, is potato also, <laughs> yeah. but not only. Okay. Is a good version. Uh, you take a pig, mm-hmm. and you take uh, the uh, part uh, intestine, intestine part yeah. where uh, shit is, and uh, you put shit. Out, you're really selling this. You uh, <laughs> make it with water a little, blah, blah, blah. yeah. You take the uh, water out, you put potato in, you uh, make uh, hot, and it's good. Better, right? Okay, I want to try. Yeah, it's it's with pig intestines. What, what is the name? Better, better, mm-hmm. okay. Where can I find it? Uh, anywhere. Really, any okay. anywhere better they sell way. the okay. national cuisine. We try to find it. Yeah, definitely. I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, what about the psychics? Because uh, there are a lot of mentalists that use the same techniques as psychics, like cold reading, hot, hot reading. Do, do do you do you take interest in like uh, the mentalists? Uh, yeah, I'm interested about to run or something, but actually, I don't have uh, very much knowledge about the mentalist. So for me, it's kind of a uh, different way what I'm doing. So actually, yeah. What about you, James? Well, do I believe in these psychics? Psychics. I don't know. They could exist. Not, I don't believe within our field, no. Mm-hmm. I've never really looked into it. Yeah, John Oliver just had uh, his... A lot of them I'm very skeptical on, uh, about, obviously because we, we do magic, so we understand that there are methods and techniques to achieving you know, something looking impossible. And... Um, yeah, so we're aware of certain things that some psychics claim to to be doing, you know. Um, but maybe there are, I don't know. Maybe they're real. Wow. And we just got into the mystic zone. <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, the let's talk about the show. You're here on uh, the March 1st, 2nd and 3rd in the... Uh, Largest Vilnius Arena, the Siemens Arena. Yep. Um, you've been to Lithuania before. How how do you like it so far? I love it. Do you think uh, you're gonna have a good show? Because we well, okay. Let me just uh, tell this to the audience. I've already seen the show. 
because I've been to Vienna, uh, flew into Vienna to see the show. And uh, well, you guys are, wow, you, you guys are amazing. So what do you expect from this show? To be pelted with potatoes. <laughs> um, I mean, this is the thing. We never know, like, like Kojin said, you know, about, about Poland and Krakow. We never know how an audience is going to respond. We never know what, what the culture's like, whether people are more reserved or, or more outgoing. So, uh, yeah, it will be a surprise for us. But we obviously hope that everyone's going to be open-minded and enjoy themselves. Are you going to have the uh, meet and greet after the shows? Yeah, of course. Can, uh, if, uh, what's the best way to approach you with uh, the, like, you know, a telephone number? or in a, you know, a message with uh, erotic content? Um, Is it through the social media or should they just uh, come to the meet and greet? And yeah, because if they do it through social media, we, you might believe that they're a catfish. So yeah, yeah just slide, slide, put your number on a little bit of paper and slide it in my back pocket. All right. <laughs> Unless, of course, you live in your parents' basement and you're a middle-aged man. Oh. I'm not into that. Okay, so... So that, you know, that, that just ruined my chances. Yeah, that's you out the question. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, for the, uh, well, since when you have uh, like a singer on the show, you ask them to sing. Yeah. And since we have a couple of magicians on the show, uh, could you do a dance? <laughs> no, no I, uh, could you do, because uh, you brought the cards and I see the uh, Sharpie. So, the illusionist, let's see a magic trick. Yeah, uh, this card is a brought, uh, James Moore brought this. This is very special. He will explain why. Yeah. Thank you for that introduction. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to James Moore from Great Britain. Southern, Southern, South. Yes. South. You should never try to hack it. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is the magic deck. What camera are we on? This one or this one? Uh, yeah, you're on that one, I think. That one. That, that one. one? Okay. Okay. And we're actually, we're selling these at the show. So you'll learn this routine as well as 50 others if you come to the show and get one of these. All right. That's the plug over and done with. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can buy these at our local store. Okay. So this is, okay. Check this out. Okay, so the cards are all different. I'll show the guys on the camera that. You know what they call this? A lonely childhood. <laughs> you, Stennis, I need you to say stop at any point. Stop. There? Do you want to go a bit further or are you happy there? Uh, I think I'm good. You good? You sure you can test me? Uh, okay, let's. No. Well, maybe actually, I'm asking you to no, do that well, because I want you to. That's the double bluff. Yeah, no. I'll, I'll, sti I'll stick got me. with this You're sticking one. there. I'll okay. stick with this one. Okay, so take the card, have a look, and remember it. Maybe you can show the camera and I'll look the other way. You done it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll knock myself out on the microphone. Uh, pop the card back in there, and we'll put the others on top. Okay, here's the idea. Eustinus, I'm going to shuffle these cards. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to pick a number between 1 and 52. Now, that's not a random question. There's 52 cards in a deck. You're going to give me a number between 1 and 52. Go yeah. for it. 16. 16? Yeah. Is there any particular reason that you chose 16? On my birthday. It's your birthday. Yeah. So it's an important number to you. Watch this. Yeah, to look I'm not going to touch the cards anymore. Count with me. 1, 2, two three, 3, 4, 5, five 6, six seven, 7, 8, eight 9, nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. 16 cards and you've stopped me at one card here. I'm going to place that down in front of you. You see, if you'd have stopped me one less, you'd have ended up with a nine of hearts. If you'd have stopped me one more, you'd have ended up with a two of spades. But you stopped at 16 because it's your birthday. Yeah. The cards were shuffled. You chose a card before this even began. Absolutely. What was the name of the card? Uh, it was the Queen of uh, Diamond. No, no, it was there was. <laughs> <laughs> Got you for a second there. <laughs> oh, the damn. Ten of spades. Damn, Ten of Spades. Yeah, you got me. There you go. That's, but that's, it's just, uh, yeah. 
I, it, it, it's always fun to to um, see to see magic. It's it's like it's so fun to get fooled. <laughs> like, you know, it makes you feel like a child. Right? Yeah, it makes it, you forget about it, your everyday worries. It makes me feel like a monkey. Have you seen the video where they they, they show card yeah. tricks to monkeys? That that's exactly yes. how I feel when it was like. Ah! Ah! It's one of the great things about magic. It opens people's minds. They believe for even for brief moments that anything's possible. And I think we need that. We've craved that throughout human history. That was nice. A simple yet. I have no idea how he did that. Because I was here. I, I saw the whole thing and still. But the more amazing thing is if you come to see the illusionist, you can buy this and you can do exactly what he did. I can, uh, yeah. And panties will drop. <laughs> That's uh, come on, trust me on this one. It's, it's a selling point. Can Did I, yours drop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing any. <laughs> oh, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, that's not a joke. <laughs> Can't afford this. Uh, all money for this. No potato, no underwear. <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right. What, what, uh, okay, what do you have? Actually, I don't know. Uh, my magic is not. Can can I be like? amazing like this much as magic deck but uh, as you uh, said regarding your question you're curious about the mental magic right yes so that's uh, that's the thing that you know messes up my mind the most today when i woke up i wrote down something because uh, in my head something came to in my head so immediately i wrote something so it's the script as you can see Maybe it's the best if you can zoom in or out, but I believe you guys can see this word script. So this is the script. I will put here, so don't touch, and make sure no one can touch it, okay? okay. And I have uh, two objects. What is this? It's a Sharpie. But, you know, it's the pen, right? It's the Sharpie, but this is pen, okay. right? And what is this? Now Card. I'm confused. <laughs> it's the cards, yeah. It's yeah, the cards. Th those are the cards, yeah. And uh, two things from mine, and I need something uh, yours. Do you have uh, your phone with you? I do. Uh, can I borrow it? We are not going to do anything with it this. It's on flight mode, though. Yeah, it's okay. Just uh, we want to put here. So we have uh, three objects, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, my, I cracked my, my screen. So. No worries, it's okay. So it's, there is no way you, you, you're going to change Actually, it. Actually, you can see phone and cards. And pen. So now, this is a warm up trick. So yeah, don't be nervous. Just uh, do it easy. Okay? I can. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of magic. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm really, every single time I see magic, I'm right. like, I had. I, I, yeah, give me your hand. Get the jitters. Okay, so now your decision is very important. Very important. Okay? So when you decide something, think deeply and say, okay? About what? I will ask you something. Okay. But when you when you give me answer, think deeply first. Okay. Okay. So now we have a three object, and then you will decide everything. Pick anything you want. Any of the three objects. Any. I'm not forcing you to okay. do something. Just everything's your choice. Grab anything you want. Three okay. to one, and then put your pocket. Okay. Now, we have two object, right? Yeah. Grab one and then give me one on my hand. It's very important. Okay. I'm getting my phone. And then I will grab, okay, grab the phone like this. Okay. Okay, right. Like this, hold it like this. Yeah. I will give you the last chance to change it if you want, but you can stay. Okay. Remember, your decision is very important. Okay. The you want to stay or you want to change? Uh, this one's cracked. Uh, so, okay, <laughs> you want to change cards, it. Yeah. So, it's done. You cannot change anymore. Okay. Are you happy with that? Uh, yeah, it's okay, yeah. Okay. So now, today, you're as a host. I made a script, as you say. So, there is something what you have to say. No, hold it on your okay. hand. And the older beer watch what you have done now, right? Right. Open it and then read it. Okay. This is your script. I have the cards. You have the phone in your hand. The pen is in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Even I gave you a chance to change it for the end, but yeah, and then you t- you changed it. Imagine this if you didn't change it, I messed up. Yeah, but you change it. This is the mental magic. Yeah, you like it. This is just warm up. But if you like it, you have to say if wow. The, if it's if wow wow, <laughs> but if it's yeah. just a warm up, I'm uh, yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna lose my kidney. In the the next real one. thing is gonna be really amazing. Okay. If you believe magic, so this magic deck. I will give you as a gift so you can learn or magic. Really? But okay, you have to thank come you. to see the That's show. That's mine. I will. <laughs> oh, it's yours. Oh, I thought it's mine. <laughs> that's magic. <laughs> so I will yeah, give James more brand new one. So anyway, <laughs> this is your phone. Yeah. But you have to swear, swear to the viewer, we never met and we never talked about the magic before. No. Because this is going to be amazing and people are skeptical. Maybe we, we talked something about this. No, right? Well, we haven't talked about... Well, this is the first... Time I'm I'm meeting this guy for yeah, like but, the third yeah, time, know, but, but with you yeah. no. Okay, yeah, we so haven't met. We haven't talked about magic. Great. This is the first time. Can you swear to beer? I your, swear it to uh, swear it on little. Well, I'll, I'll have to your, open up major everything. I'll, I'll, I'll have to open up the constitution, but yeah, I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> All right. So I have uh, your phone. Yeah. Do you have any bill? You have you have a wallet or something? Yeah. I asked it before, maybe. Yeah. Please bring your wallet if you have. Right. Yeah, and then can I open it? Yeah, may I? Thank you. Yeah, it's full of uh, check notes. Okay, so money clip. Can I take a one bill? Yes. Okay, so this is your wallet, and then could you help me to hold the bill like this? Okay. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay. Could you hold it with your left hand? The yeah. Bill? Just hold it, and then people can see that. So. It's your phone, and then can you open and then can, could you go to the calculate? Okay. Calculate? Um, yeah. Okay, this is calculate. So, you can see now, we can see number zero. Now, uh, it's the same thing, your decision is very important. Push uh, about three number, any number you like. Push the three digits. Uh, three digits. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to show me. Okay, and then push the time. Uh, the what now? Uh, times. Uh, times. Times? Yeah, and then push it three on other numbers. Yeah. Okay, so now you guys can see he pushed it and then uh, I will push the, can you push the equal, equal, equal. All right, so we have uh, six numbers, right? Yeah. What is it, uh, six numbers? Seven, eight, seven, three, five, two. Seven, eight, seven, Three, five, two. Oh, this is amazing. Well, I can't believe. What? You know why? What? Do you know all the bills, they have uh, their own signal number? The, yeah. Serial number. Yeah. A serial number. But what if... What if... There is a serial number. It, is, it, is it exactly this? Okay, open it well, slowly. Well, that's obviously impossible. Open it slowly. And okay. then open it. Maybe there is a serial number. Open open the bill. <laughs> is there a serial number? Oh, maybe there is. And then, yeah, there we go. Read it. 787-352. Eight, eight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, go fuck yourself. I will show you guys. <laughs> you guys can see clearly. As I mentioned, this is his phone and this is his beer. I put in the numbers on my own. You have not. This is amazing, right? Had any chance? All to. you need, you should say, "Wow," you know. Wow! So like, wow! Oh man, you guys are. So <laughs> this is <laughs> this is for me, right? This is like, I'm, I'm getting the uh, the, the, the. So it's for me. Uh, I, can, I, I can buy the potato yeah. with this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Many potato. It's like five uh, minimal wages. But but you know you you already you already came to see the show. This is you know actually nothing comparative with our show. Oh know? yeah, yeah. You have to oh, yeah. tell them how amazing is the Illusionist show. It really. is. This it, is just a little thing compared. Yeah, to Yeah, but our it's show. still it's still it, it's mind boggling. But uh, <laughs> the thing uh, and it's like well. You two are, are, are amazing, but uh, there are eight magicians. Well, eight of you, and, and 
every single one of you is just uh, a whole different and you're all so different but yet again every single one of the uh, of the acts is just yeah we don't, we wow. all specialize in a different <laughs> thank you. genre of magic so there's yeah there's manipulation artists illusionists mm -hmm. uh, fastest costume changes in the world oh yeah uh, yeah you uh, i've seen i've seen those actually on on youtube before i saw your show it's it's, uh, they're they're absolutely yeah. incredible yeah, so there's something on offer for, for, for all ages, all members of the family, whether you're six years old, 106. Oh, yeah, and they have, and they have uh, the thing for, for kids as well, like uh, bring mm. your kids, they're, yeah. they're going to love it. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect for kids. Exactly. <sighs> Guys, uh, this has been a blast. I, I had a lot, of, a lot of fun talking to you guys. Thank you so very much for coming thank in you, thank early. You for and uh, once again... Uh, is going to be March 1st, 2nd and 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, Bus jaurė gerai, žinokit. Tai yeah. būtinai ateikite. Uh, o šitie, jeigu pamatysite jos gatvėje, duokite jiems įsinugį. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you so very much. This was just in Lithuania, our first edition. Uh, we started the show and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll uh, yeah, we'll, they won't cancel us after this one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thank you thank you guys thank you very much thank you oh shit that was fun oh thank you they like it